Howdy, I'm bringing you an interesting integral here. It's a simple looking integral. It's an integral, it's a definite integral with fractional lower limit, fractional upper limit of integration. And it, it turns out this is a very easy integral if the upper and lower limits are, are integers, just because of the nature of this guy. This ends up looking like a triangle period of one, triangle area of one half, it turns out. But it, it gets a little more involved if, if you have non-integer upper and lower limits of integration. Now, uh, I'm going to start with something, a fra the fractional part, uh, if you're not familiar with that, the fractional part of a number is just that. It's the fractional piece. For example, if you did the fractional part of the number 2.6, 0.6 or 6 tenths is the fractional part. So it really means just the proper fractional part of any number. Now, if the number's already an integer, the fractional part will be equal to zero. But it's clear that this fractional part is going to be a number bounded between zero and one, one strict. And also, it, this is pretty clear also, it, it, on the interval zero, one, it's already a proper fraction, right? So x is equal to uh, the fractional part of x. Now, but this result right here is, is a little, this is a special case right here. Like if i is equal to zero, uh, if i is an integer, this, this would be x minus zero you know you don't put the zero in there but this is the more general truth and let me see if i can draw a picture a quick picture to justify this before we get into the actual uh, evaluation of this integral okay i'm gonna y'all you know, this is i'm using this zoom uh graphing tool it's i can't draw very straight on it but let's call this the xy plane and let's say this is one here on the on the x axis and then one on the y axis all right so uh that's certainly the line uh y equals x right there okay now if you move to the right let's say gosh it's just so hopefully i get the point across here okay we'll ca call that two sorry we'll call that two and then uh you would get another line and this line here would be x minus one okay again it's just this x graph shifted to the right um one unit and then uh, again this i'll embarrass myself further this is three gosh this is three and so this would be uh x minus two right here you know my deepest apologies hopefully that gets the point across I have it. I'm just using a, a free screen recorder here, and you and it shows. Uh, but notice that that's exactly this form right here. Notice how x minus i. You're in the interval i to i plus one. That's exactly what's going on here. I would be one right here. This would be the interval one two. I would be two right here. This would be the interval two three. And so what you get is these actually, believe it or not, form triangles. Now with this particular integral, though, we're not actually just doing triangles, we're doing portions of triangles, and sometimes that ends up being a trapezoid. This was pointed out by Angel Mendez Rivera when she was commenting on a, a black pen, red pen video. This, her comment was like an article in a, in, a, in a college math journal. You know, it was very impressive. But anyway, she posed the question of what if these are upper and lower limits aren't integers? Now, um, so, and this holds for all integers, believe it or not, this, this pattern would continue left and right, you know? But let's go ahead. Uh, let me let me clear this out and let's get into the. Uh, whoops. Okay, let's move on down and get into the how this goes. All right. Now, so it makes sense to split this uh, definite integral up at, at natural number uh, boundaries if you can, and that's exactly what I did right here. I went from five thirds to two. Now you notice this is much better drawing than I just did right here. Here's five thirds to two, and you get a trapezoid that was mentioned by Angel Mendez Rivera. And, and I want to give her credit. This was this this was incredible, really. It, uh, she did all these, uh, I think, floor functions and ceiling functions, and you know it works out. You get a trapezoid in some cases. In some cases, you just get a smaller part of a triangle. But the way she did the floor ceiling was just really nice. Now. Um, and so, but anyway, the, the rest of it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, this is going to break up, since you're in the interval one to two right here, it's going to become x minus one will be the, the new fractional piece. And then since you're in the interval two, three, x minus two will be the new fractional piece. 
And these are just straightforward uh, antiderivatives here. Uh, the antiderivative would be x minus i quantity squared all, all over two. It's really the base times the height of triangles and you're subtracting stuff off, you know, basically. Like this is just the shaded area is the area of the big triangle minus the area of the smaller triangle, which is exactly what this says if you just think one half uh, base times altitude. But anyway, you get this marvelous looking number here, 161 uh, over 288, a little bit more than one half. And um, that's if you if, to put this in perspective, each of the big triangles would have an area of one half, which is how the red pin black pin video did. He did like from zero to four, I think, of, of the fractional piece and just added up four triangles. But this is this is a little bit more challenging, not much, but it's a little bit more challenging. And again, thanks to uh, black pin, red pin, and also uh, Rivera for for the, just a, a very lengthy and, and uh, well written, almost like master dissertation. Well, not quite. But in a comment, it was just a comment at a, at a website, and it was just very good work. All right, I hope you guys enjoy.